Hello everybody and welcome along as IMSA TV and IMSA Radio are now together as we get ready for a very busy day here at Lime Rock Park, a natural terrain road racing circuit near Lakeville, Connecticut, the road racing centre of the northeast. Little bull ring of a circuit. The ground was broken here in 1956. And the first race held in 1957. It's been a beautiful week here after some big storms on Tuesday that blew through the northeast. Seven corners, just on a mile and a half, mostly right-handed, so the teams and drivers are getting their heads around setting a car up for almost a reverse oval setup. Not quite the stagger, of course, because there's no banking, but this is a very, very technical circuit, and it's fast too. Getting on for 100 mile an hour plus on the average. Big and knowledgeable crowd being flocking in throughout Friday and Saturday. And we're going to set two pole positions in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship next, live on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Shea Adam is our Continental Tire pit lane reporter. She's down in that pit lane at the moment where preparations are well underway for this slightly different format. We've just had the final free practice session, morning warm-up, if you will, Shea, but it effectively was a, a final free practice session. Uh, we'll talk about the one red flag we've had at the weekend in a moment, but first of all, bring us up to date with who is likely to be qualifying in GT Daytona. Good morning, by the way. Good morning. This is going to be fun. Just wait until you hear the names that are uh, going to be listed off for the qualifiers. Uh, going all the way down to see who is going to be in the Wright Motorsport Porsche first. I believe that is Miss Christina Nielsen. She is preparing herself, getting her helmet ready to put on. No, no, it is Patrick Long behind the wheel of the car right now. So uh, that would be Pat Long going out and trying to get pole in a Porsche. That's always a very good bet. Uh, and the number 44 Magnus Racing Audi will be John Potter, fresh off first podium of the season. Oh my goodness. Okay, this just got a whole lot more interesting. The 96 Turner BMW is going to be Bill Oberlin qualifying. In the number 14 Lexus, it's Dominic Bauman taking responsibilities there. The guy who's already got three poles on the season, Jack Hawksworth, is in the number 15 Lexus. The 63 Ferrari is Cooper McNeil. In the 33 Mercedes, the car that won the last time out, that is Ben Keating. And then we get to the two Acuras, where it is 93 Lawson Oschenbach and 86 Catherine Legg. But who is going to be qualifying our championship leading GTD car? That's Brian Sellers. I have no clue who's going to get this pull, John. I've got to tell you already that that is the big guns. They are the big guns out uh, for qualifying for the most part. Uh, and this is going to be a 15-minute dash for pole position. Track position, Jeremy, here is very, very important indeed. And it might be cooler for us, but inside the AMG Mercedes, 80 degrees inside that car on the thermometer that we could see on the onboard there. And it'll get hotter once the engine gets fired up oh, and yes. gets out on the racetrack. Yeah, it's going to be super hot inside that car. Uh, and, you know, the reason why the... Uh, the I mean, the, the, the GT Daytona is, a, is a, effectively a pro-am class. You've got a pro driver and an am driver. It's, that's over, oversimplifying it. But uh, the, the, the fact of the matter here is it, it's here more than anywhere else you would really... Normally, you would start the uh, less fast driver uh, to do the qualifying and start the race. But here, because it's very easy to get a lap down, it's a, it, I think it's a pretty good strategy to start off with the fast guy, particularly for Patrick Long. That car has been fast all weekend. He was quickish yesterday, set the fastest lap by about three tenths of a second. He was fastest again this morning. It kind of makes sense for him to qualify up front. If he can stay up front uh, and he pull out a lead in the early stage, when he hands over to Christina Nielsen, who is very accomplished, let's, let's face it, a two-time champion in GT Daytona. Uh, so you know, she can then carry up when she takes over the car. If it's in the lead, she's got a great opportunity to come, home, come, come away with that team's first win of the season. So I think that's a great strategic call, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. 
Yes, very much uh, looking forward to how this is going to work. The Continental tyres come up to temper pressure pretty quickly, so I expect to see these guys going for, for it very, very early on indeed. Dominic Bauman, I think the last car out. So we'll wait for them to come around. track record by the way was set last year by Madison Snow in the championship leading Lamborghini Huracan for Paul Miller Racing car number 48 that was a 52.508 we've already seen most of the field quicker than that actually at one stage or another during this weekend so I would certainly expect that track record in GT Daytona to take a bit of a beating over the next what uh, 13 minutes So, um, 12 and a half minutes on the timing screen, but uh, 12.52 on my TV picture, so I'm not sure which one of those is correct. OK, I think we've got a bit of a problem here, unfortunately, with uh, our feed being a bit behind real time. So, uh, we'll go from the timing screens uh, rather than uh, anything else at the moment doesn't take much to confuse me I'm a bear of small brain I'm afraid so let's see look out the window Brian Sellers with the fastest time so far 52.3 and that is a pretty good lap early on Jeremy for what is effectively his first flying lap through goes the right motorsport Porsche in front of me let's see how Pat Long has done 52.9 for him that's good enough for fourth position there goes the Lexus in front of me now yeah, it's certainly interesting to me that Jack Hawks who would qualify number 15 car David Heinemann had selected not to make the trip to Connecticut this weekend he's not a he's not a, a fan of this racetrack most people are actually it's quite surprising to me that but anyhow uh, he's not here so uh, Super Sub is going to be here this weekend, Mario Farnbacher, and I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Mario is not going to get to qualify the car, but uh, Jack has been, uh, as, we've already, as you already talked about a little while ago, he's been on fire lately, he's had three out of the four most recent poles, so he would like to make it uh, four out of five. Uh, the, the Lexus hasn't been on the uh, uh, front running pace so far this weekend, they knew coming in here this wasn't going to be a track that was particularly going to favour the Lexus RCF, also the fact that because it's had such uh, strong pace lately, men because of the brilliance of Jack Hawks with it has to be said, uh, the, uh, the the car's got a little bit of a, uh, a weight gain for this weekend on the balance performance, 15 kilos added to the Lexus RCF, also the Mercedes is 10 kilos heavier as well, a few other minor changes but those are the significant ones uh, I think coming into here and as we saw in practice yesterday John, all the manufacturers are very, very close. Across the line in front of us now, there goes the green and white Mercedes, then the 63 WeatherTech car behind it, and Cooper McNeil goes to the top. We saw this yesterday, Jeremy, on new tyres. That car was very, very quick indeed, and provisional pole position for, well, all of 10 seconds as Pat Long goes through and reclaims it for Paul. Big week for Pat this racing here this week, then coming across to the UK for the first ever Luftgekult outside of the USA down at Bista Heritage. Looking forward to that next Sunday. And Maya Kult will be getting fired up to take over there. Pat Long with a 51-4. 
51-4 for a GT Tier Tunica. Clean your ears out. 51-4. That's a stunning. That's that. what uh, uh, people I mean, are good. Sorry, I thought you said 51-4 there. Yeah, hand off. exactly. I mean, 52-5 was a lap record from just one year ago. A whole second inside it. That's an amazing lap from Patrick Long. Dominic Bauman, by the way, is just under 51.6 in the Lexus, kind of a 14. That's a brilliant effort as well for somebody on their first trip to Lime Rock Park. But hats off to Cooper McNeely. As you said, both he and Gunnar Jeanette, they, have, they were fast yesterday. That's a great lap from Cooper uh, under 51.8. And all of a sudden, he's three tenths behind the quickest guy, which is which is amazing to me. I, I'm, I certainly didn't, didn't uh, I'm not surprised by the fact they're going faster. That fast, however, wow, that's very, very impressive. Share Adam in the pit lane. There are three pull award stickers on the car that is sitting in the pit lane. That is the 15 of Jack Cox where the uh, engine cover is off and there are three guys working in the engine bay. It's never a good thing when there are mechanics inside of your race car when other ones are out on track and they don't seem to have their handle on everything yet. Now they're putting uh, components of the car back together. They're going to send Jack back out, but this is not the way they wanted to start off the day. And uh, Cooper McNeil has come back into the pit lane, so he is calling it a day or at the very least cooling off his continental tires. Thank you, Shea. Shea, Adam. So, still just under eight minutes to go. As the 20 minutes, sorry, 15 minutes of qualifying for GT Daytona for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Now, halfway through, John Potter in the pit lane. Cooper McNeil yeah. in the pit lane, Jack Hawksworth, as we heard, in the pit lane. Uh, John Paul has done a good job there. I mean, 52-6, that's, yeah, that's a pretty good lap. It's, it, it's, it's, only, it's only a tenth of a second away from the lap record yeah, set one that. year ago, when he finds himself ninth. I mean, all, all of the, and, he, and he's half a second behind Catherine Legg, who's in eighth position. Uh, that's a bit of a surprise, uh, and I wonder whether the fact that the, uh, the, My, the Meyer Shank racing with Kerbang and Jim Ackers barely did the laps this morning. I wonder if that's, whether that's a factor. Could now be coming back to Horton a little bit because I don't think they would have expected to find themselves that far back on the grid. Catherine uh, has uh, come onto pit lane as well. There's still seven, nearly seven minutes remaining, so there is time to go back out again. But, uh, you know, to have all of these cars that fast is pretty remarkable. Brian Sellers, by the way, goes up into third place oh, in the number 48 Lamborghini. Great right lap. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's still, you know, he's still within four tenths. I mean, we've got the top seven cars come by half a second, uh, and the top eight all well within the lap record. Brian Sellers in a car that had a brand new engine fitted yesterday, came out for the last part of the third free practice session, for the most part of it, actually and got some 40 odd laps in. But that is real testament to how hard the Paul Miller racing team have worked. That's the championship leading car. Also coming back into the pit lane. We've only had one red flag this weekend. Patrick Pele caused it in the final free practice session. And Shea Adam, there's good news for Porsche GT Le Mans fans. I doff my proverbial cap to the 911 crew members. They have fixed the car and they feel so good about the fix that they did that they were taking some time to clean the bugs off. So <laughs> clearly they have done a good job and that car will be coming out for qualifying in the next session. But also of note, John, while all these cars are peeling back into the pit lane, that number 15 Lexus of Jack Hawksworth has a very clear track in front of him. Since they fixed the problem and got him out, we'll have to see what he can do. Thank you, Shea. Last five and a half minutes. Yeah, he's not going to have any uh, problems with traffic either, is he, uh, Jack Hawksworth? Because uh, the only other car on the track is uh, Bill Arbelin in number 96 Turner Motorsport BMW. Uh, no surprise that uh, the birthday boy from yesterday, Robbie Foley, didn't get an opportunity to qualify the Turner Motorsport BMW. Too much birthday kick. Well, perhaps so, exactly <laughs> that. And, and, and uh, yeah, but uh, hats off to you, Robbie. Hope you had a good day yesterday, 22nd birthday. But he'll be looking for a, a strong run here this afternoon in the race. So he's, he's keeping his powder dry, right? Yeah, absolutely right. Beautiful morning here at Live Rock Park. Four minutes and 35 seconds on the official timing, just on 9.45 in the morning. And a full day of action live in sound and vision from IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. 
keep it locked in here to RS2 and don't forget we'll be on Sirius XM later on 202 and 138 for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship 2 hour and 45 a 2 hour and 40 minute Grand Prix of the North East now, I think the most recent Porsche pole in GTD was Matthew Jaminet uh, for Allegra Motorsports at Circuit America's last year. Oh, wow, that's this a great pickup. Yeah, the, the, this, the, we've had 50 GTD races since the formation of the IMSA World Tech Sports Car Championship in 2014, and the Porsche uh, leads the way in terms of, of, of wins in GTD, uh, 11 to 10 over BMW, Ferrari third on seven out of those 50. Uh, certainly, but it's been a bit of a, a dry streak for, for Porsche. Not yet uh, had the opportunity to uh, visit victory. Not only not, has it not had a, a win this season, uh, the best result, well, they're, they're, they're last, amazingly, in the manufactured GTD Manufacturers Charity coming into this weekend. So they've not had a lot of luck this season, Porsche. Hopefully, hoping to turn that around here. Certainly, a brilliant effort in qualifying by Patrick Long. And I'm pretty sure, Jeremy, that this would be Pat's first pole position since the merger in 2014. That's reasonable. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Great news for Plonky, as I say, big week for him. He's only coming up half of the race. He's done 227 races in the uh, Interworld Tech Sports Car Championship in uh, 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 LMOD cars. It's been a good one. Here's Jack Hawksworth there. He's making his, his bid here. He's up to third place in car number 15. Taking advantage of a little bit of rubber laid down by the cars have already uh, been out on track and now vacated the premises. He's, he's the only guy out there at the moment, so no traffic problems for Jack. It's just him against the one and a half miles of Lime Rock Park and already up into third position with a 51.704. Last two minutes or thereabouts, just a little over that as we're waiting to see who goes around again. Hawks within to third position then, as we've just mentioned in that Lexus. So it's Porsche, Lexus, Lexus, Lamborghini, Ferrari, BMW, your top six in GT, Daytona. He's lifted off there. Is he going to try and, is he gonna try and uh, get another run? He's here? winding up, coming yeah, through so. the final corner. Here comes that bright red car, passes us now, the 15 car. Hawks with then, off on what will be his sixth lap and heading down towards the first corner gets it neat and tidy through big ben tucks in to the only left hand and just loses the back in a moment for a moment or two and then up through the no name straight already heading towards uphill no chicane no chicane for these cars so he'll power straight through and up the uh, uphill no sorry it is the chicane for these cars my apologies we're in uh, weathertech well, um, well he, he actually he was obviously listening to me because he didn't take the chicane that's my fault i've cursed him the curse of the commentator is back <laughs> yesterday it was clear but today it's back there uh, I, i'm not sure whether he might have just kind of aborted that lap and, but maybe <laughs> but you know, the, the problem with the lexus i mean it's been fabulously fast this season jack's had uh, three of the four most recent poles and fastest race ups to bring that car onto pit lane by the way uh he's been fabulously fast but the trick of that car has been keeping the rear tires underneath it yes. and that particularly is going to be a problem this weekend at live rock park particularly with the extra weight added since last well, time he, he caught me out there as he's going down towards the chicken <laughs> i thought well he's not breaking so he's going up the uphill uh, uh, and he did go up the uphill and i thought no no it's, as you rightly said jeremy no, not this one he should be turning right there so my apologies uh, checkered flag is in hand but not quite out because there's 22 seconds of the session still to run he is however in the pit lane so no one out on the circuit pat long pat long and right motorsport can breathe easy because yeah, subject be with that. Yeah, all sorts of bad luck this season. they have they've if I mean, they had hadn't had bad luck they'd have had no luck at all crashed before the first green flag of the year Let's not forget that uh, Daytona at the Rolex. Their race didn't start to what, nearly four hours later, was Correct. it? Correct. Correct. a long time. So Pat Long will take the Wright Motorsport red and white Porsche down to meet Cher Adam for the pool sitting interview. And I think just going to put some transport tyres on that car before he does so. Checkered flag is now out, so confirmation then. Starting on the outside of the front row will be 
Dominic Bauman on the inside of the front row in the number 58 Porsche. Pat Long claims a very impressive pole position with a new qualifying record for GT Daytona, 51.491 seconds for the almost one and a half miles. Shit, Adam has a Continental Tire pit lane report with our first of two pole sitters this weekend. Well, no, he's not down here yet, John. Uh, he stopped in his box, which is the first one in towards pit in for this weekend. And we're just waiting for him to drive down to the penalty box area where the banner is set up and all the photographers are waiting. And once he gets here, I will be able to chat with him, but uh, I haven't even heard the Porsche flat six fire up yet. Still putting the transport tires on. It won't be too long. Pat's back in the car and you might just be able to hear that the flat six has fired. It's so far off in the distance. How is such a short pit lane? How is that Porsche so far away? Ah, here it comes. Man, I love the, the right livery that That's they do great, on all these cars. It? The red nose with the white hood, it's the same on all their cars and all the different series, so distinguished. And uh, such a championship winning livery as well. They've had so much success in IMSA competition. And now Patrick is pulling up and hitting his marks. There we go, and the flat six turns back off. So now we'll give Pat an opportunity to get out of the car and put uh, all of his helmet gear back with the car so he doesn't lose any of it. Climbs out. There is a smile in the eyes of Patrick Long and a, a very restrained pump of the fist. He understands more than most that pole position isn't a race win, but it's still worthy of at least a little bit of celebration. So we'll see if we can give Pat an opportunity to get off his helmet and then walk him over. So just waiting for what I'm sure is a very, very happy Patrick Long, one of America's great road racing talents, the California kid. The now well-known green, bright green helmet. Gloves are off and helmet is about to come off. Well, Patrick, congratulations. Your first pole position since the uh, merger back in 2014, the 50th race for GTD. Took you long enough, but you finally got there. What is it about Lime Rock Park that suits you and Porsche so well? Yeah, the 911 has always been strong here at Lime Rock. Uh, brings back great memories with Jurg, uh, with our run with Peterson White Lightning and Flying Lizard. But today's about Wright Motorsport. Uh, it's about Porsche and the GT3R. Uh, we've had a, a slumpy season, um, and it reminds everybody uh, on the crew that winds change quickly in motorsport. Uh, the lows teach you to kind of band together, and then uh, you have something like this in a pole position makes it that much sweeter. Does it feel like this is a good jumping off point? You've got four wins here at Lime Rock Park. This is a track where you're very comfortable and the team knows very well that, uh, on top of that. You feel like you can string it all together here today now that you've got the pole. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Um, the competition is so, so tight. Everybody's seen it this year that you can't bet on any one car. Uh, Lime Rock is tough. Uh, everybody can do a fast lap, but about 10 laps in, there's a big deficit and a lot of cars fall off. So we're going to have to do our homework. Uh, Bobby V, our engineer, will be working hard on the race strategy. Christine has been working really hard. She's doing well adapting to the 911. It's been a while since she's been in that car, but uh, we're, we're happy. We've been really confident all week, but uh, we've been working every single session, making big swings at the car. So it wasn't, it wasn't easy to get here, but uh, again, it makes it all the much sweeter. It's going to be a pretty cool experience for you off the start of this race, mixing it up with the GTLM cars. That's a class that I've associated you with for such a long time. How long do you think it'll be before they start to pull away? Because you should be able to keep up with them for a while. Yeah, um, they definitely have more speed in the corners. Uh, straight line speed, we're pretty similar. Um, a bit mid range, they're tougher, um, but we try to stay out of their way. Uh, I respect and have raced against uh, most all the drivers in that class, uh, but GTD is going to be busy for us. Uh, so I got to worry about what's around me than what's ahead of me. Uh, once we the race, it will factor in as far as them coming through. Uh, I felt yesterday in practice when they were long in the tooth on their tire, uh, it was very much closer between the two classes. So look for something about 20 minutes in where it'll get a little bit tighter. Can't wait. Good luck. Good luck today, Pat, and congrats. Thank you. Yeah, well done, Patrick. Excellent stuff in my neck of the woods. Uh, next week, as I say, for Luftgefühl to the foot of the air-cooled uh, festivals later on. Bless you, thank you. Uh, Luftgefühl uh, has become uh, a bit of uh, a cult events here in the United States and for the first one outside of the US coming to the center of England 
Mr. Heritage next weekend, the 29th. Uh, if you're in the UK and you want to be part of that, um, then you need to get onto their website and their Facebook page. There are very limited tickets uh, for that next weekend. Get on there quickly. So, Jeremy, Porsche, Lexus, Lexus, Lamborghini. That's how they'll be chasing down the first corner. We go green for two hours and 40 minutes of the Northeast Grand Prix later on today. That's real, I mean, that is excellent, excellent uh, reward for some very hard work from Wright Motorsport. And they've only got the one car this weekend. Mike Schein deciding not to come, or at least had uh, something that clashed relatively late on in the, in the piece. And so just the one car, they've thrown all of their resources behind that. And as I say, that's, uh, that's just reward, I think, for some hard work this season with that uh, Porsche GT3. Yeah, no question. A really, really good uh, performance by that whole team. It's been a, a very disappointing year so far. They certainly came in with pretty high expectations, uh, and Christina Nielsen certainly did as a two-time defending champion. So uh, it has been a bit of a, a wake-up call for them. And uh, like I say, like we said a little while ago, yeah, pretty much nothing has gone right for them. But this has been this is a really good bounce back, and uh, the, you know, the best uh, result so far was at sixth place at uh, at uh, Sebring. So. To, to qualify this well, have that kind of pole position. I'm not even sure, I've, I've been looking back through my notes here trying to find out when Patrick's last pole position was. It was a long time ago. Uh, he had three poles in the in the ALMS era um, and uh, got back far enough yeah, to find out been, when the last one was. He's been missing for a little while. Yes. He certainly hasn't done all the races. No, and he hasn't, done, he hasn't qualified the car very often either. Okay, that's a fair uh, point as well, Jeremy, but, yes. Um, very, very rarely actually so uh, it, that's one of the reasons why it's been such a long time but uh, great for him I mean he, he's a great ambassador for the sport for Porsche for Wright Motorsports for everything you know, for, for, for everything so really cool uh, for one of the hardest workers working guys and most genuine guys in this business to get this well in pole position you know Porsche as he said it, it, they have a great track record here uh, at uh, Lime Rock Park and he's looking to continue that legacy this afternoon just the GT cars here this weekend, which means GT LM are up next and will be setting the overall pole position for the Northeast Grand Prix. If you are just joining us, hello, welcome along to a beautiful, beautiful day here at Lime Rock Park. And we have uh, this qualifying, the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, which will be available in Sound and Vision, and the Two hours and 40 minutes of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship as well. All to come today. Big crowd on hand. Let's find out from Shea Adam who our qualifiers will be in GT Le Mans, Shea. Shall we do it in reverse championship order? Oh, yeah. All right. Just, just make it a little interesting. All right. Okay. The black BMW, which has suited John Edwards so, so well, will have him driving for this qualifying session. John trying to get his fourth series pole position. Trying to keep him from getting that will be his teammate, Connor Filippi in the white BMW, the number 25. Uh, then next would be the number 911. That was the cause of our red flag earlier on in the session, and it will be redemption for Patrick Pile. He is given an opportunity to go out and take the car and reward his team with the pole in the car that he won here last year. Uh, then next in the championship would be, oh, the number 912, the sister car, that is Lawrence Vantor, getting an opportunity to go for his first ever pole position in the series. Uh, they are tied on points with the Ford Corvette, and it is Tommy Milner who will be taking that car out for qualifying today. He will be doing battle with Dirk Mueller, the number 66 Ford Mustang. Uh, his teammate, Antonio Garcia, who currently sits second in points, has been given the responsibility for the three Corvette. And then the championship leaders, the number 67 Ford, it's going to be Richard Westbrook taking qualifying there as the green flag comes out. And nobody has left the pit lane as of yet, John. We have uh, this game playing again. There goes a Corvette firing up. It is Tommy. And Milner is the first one to roll. He will have zero issue with traffic unless somebody pulls out of the pit lane right in front of him. Yeah, and that is the problem, Shea. That's a very good point that 
you know, 55 seconds after you pull out, you might think you've got a clear run, but if someone pulls out just 40 seconds after you, then you're going to catch him halfway around their warm-up lap. That is the issue. So we are underway as the Porsches are firing. Already the Corvette is down to the braking area for the uphill chicane. It doesn't take too much of the kerbs. The Porsches use a lot of kerbs through there. That will be a difference if you're watching at that area. Beautiful sunshine, bright velocity, yellow number four Corvette then under the Continental Bridge down into the final diving turn and out to start here flying lap. Now we know these Michelin tyres need a little bit of care, so don't expect to see the ultimate fastest lap straight away. Indeed, in some of our qualifying sessions, it's been the very last lap dash to the chequered flag that has seen pole position in this category. And this will be overall pole position here. I may have peaked too early here with 13.20 to go on the screen. Through then goes the number four, Jan Magnussen, down the no-name straight. Bright sunshine glinting off the very shiny bodywork. Takes a wee bit more of the curb this time as he starts to get into his stride. 13 minutes to go. Only Patrick Pele out on the circuit with him at the moment, so this is interesting. The screen past us here. A lot of speed down the hill there, isn't he? There he goes. First timed lap for Milner. It's the time is a 53-0. So he's not yet ahead of the GTD cars, but don't worry about that. Who else has just come out? That was the second Porsche. Lawrence Panter qualifying that car. Shea Adam is watching other cars firing up and getting ready to go. Di Filippi has just pulled out of the pit lane in the white BMW. That would be the number 25. And the 67 of Richard Westbrook has life. That Ford EcoBoost engine now roaring into life, as does Antonio Garcia. People are realizing that time is counting down and the waiting game is, uh, well, not worth waiting for. Tommy Milner lays down the gauntlet here, 50.068 for car number four, the Chevy Corvette. What a brilliant open, down, opening gambit there. I thought he was carrying a lot of speed through, down a downhill on that last lap to go onto that flying lap. That's a magnificent effort. That's already quicker than, uh, and, than his teammate Antonio Garcia managed this morning to set the fastest time of the weekend so far. Fantastic effort for, for Tommy Milner. But, I'm sure there's more to come here from lots of other guys. And he's actually gone quicker on this uh, Sector 1 on the lap as well. All of the GT Le Mans cars are on the circuit as the number 911 Porsche comes around. Patrick Pele, who up until this point has been the fastest man on the circuit. He goes through and into the first corner. What is Pele's time? Oh, that's only his first flying lap. It's a 52-1. He's OK. He's building up his time and the pressures on those Michelin tyres. Good enough for second place, but not ahead of the GTDs. There goes his teammate, Lawrence Van Ter. That's his first representative time, 52-1 as well. So the Porsches matching each other to the 10th as they get up to speed. Over the top of the rise into West Bend, the 911 turns right-handed, now rides up on the curb and comes underneath the Continental Tire Bridge, down in the final corner, looks for the apex, gets it, runs all the way out to the rumble strip. 10.15 on the clock, 10.13 as he crosses the line. Pele, 51.5. Watch out the next lap for Pele, and he's going to have to be careful here because he's got traffic ahead of him. It's the number 66 Porsche, excuse me, 66 Ford ahead of the Porsche. Dirk Muller, is there enough space for Pele to get this lap done as he comes through no name straight now? Down through the gearbox, the flat six engine revving, taking way more curve than anybody else. The Porsche so much more balanced over the curves on the uphill chicane, now through West Bend. 
under the bridge, falling off the end of the world, and waiting, waiting for the last moment to turn in. Turn in too early there, you run out of room very, very quickly indeed. Milner's 50.068 is the time to beat at the moment. Muller's gone through the 50.624. Pele, yeah. 50.758. And 912, Lawrence Vantor, 51. Dirk Mulliver with the fastest final sector of anybody as he starts his next lap. Yeah, but nowhere close to Tom and Milner. That's a fantastic hit. Tom and Milner's, by the way, one of only three drivers in the entire GTLM field who does not yet have a pole to his name. He's had the fastest lap in the past, as has Jesse Croner, but um, uh, those are the only two along with that Lawrence Van Tour who have not yet got a pole position, but could this be the day for Tom and Milner? That was just a sensational first effort. into Big Bend and that Chip Ganassi GT looks very well balanced indeed. 49.9 last time around for Dirk Muller. The 66 car, the 66 car goes through and there's the 49. Talking to the teams earlier in the weekend and the Sims said there was a 49 in there. If the conditions were right, they clearly are. And Dirk Muller is the first man ever in a GT Le Mans car to go sub 50 seconds. Listen to what I said there, sub 50 seconds for a GT Le Mans car. Extraordinary stuff. So Milner now a tenth away on 50 flat, 50.055 for Garcia. So the two Corvettes very close together. Richard Westbrook finding some speed now. Ford, Corvette, Corvette, Ford, Porsche, BMW, BMW, and Patrick Pelier, the man who set the pace late yesterday and this morning, is down in eighth position. Only did a 50.6, only a 50.6, Jeremy. Yeah, but uh, Antonio Garcia is going up to speed now. He's just got purple in sector one. He's, he's got quicker even than Tom and Milner managed. Just a whole tenth quicker than that uh, was uh, Dirk Mueller. Let's see what he can do for the rest of the lap. Onto the Sam Posey straight, kicks up a bit of dust from the right-hand side. Tires cross the line now. Garcia! Ago, Garcia to the top with a 49.7! than a tenth and a half in hand and that round here in fact that in the context of any GT Le Mans qualifying is a lot but round here that's a country mile that is an absolutely outstanding lap six and a half minutes still to go this is not over we've seen these Michelin tyres just get quicker and quicker as the fuel burns off there's still time for drivers to do something about this and uh, the two guys at the back of the field now, Conor Di Filippi, car number 25, and really surprisingly, Patrick Pile and the number 911 Porsche, who was fastest yesterday, they're the only two who have not yet beaten the existing track record set last year by Jimmy Bruni in the Porsche of 50.4. Dirk Muller winding up to another big one, turns in, my goodness, that Ford just turns in as if it's on rails into the final corner starts under the lap now cross the stripe underneath the bridge down towards the first corner has the bmw of john edwards ahead of him in big ben john's just started a fast lap as well connor de Filippi's just done his fast lap in the white bmw the number 25 car backing out of it now muller the 66 car but with five and a half minutes plus still to go to count him out of having to have another goal. BMW number 24, Kirk riding at the uphill chicane with the Antonio Garcia Corvette just ahead of him through the West Bend. Now falling down the descent into the final corner. They're all flirting with the edge yeah. of the circuit, the edge of the rumble strip coming out of turn seven, the diving turn there. It's the proof for Richard Westbrook that it's still only fifth fastest of 50.1. So it's Chevrolet Porsche Ford, Chevrolet Ford BMW, the top six, with five minutes remaining. It's uh, an improvement for Patrick Pile. He's last at the moment. That's incredible. Certainly wouldn't have expected that. But I don't think he'll, he'll stay there. He's just gone for his uh, personal best in sector one minute. It's a full two and a half tenths away from that standard set by Antonio Garcia in the Corvette. Well, well, well. Vantour into the 49s as well. 
for Porsche now. Second place, Garcia from Porsche 912. 49920, 49940. We've got three cars in the 49s now, Jeremy. This is extraordinary stuff. Well, you were absolutely right on that one yesterday. I thought to, I think you're being optimistic, but uh, I say not, uh, not, not at all. Three of them, as you say, and the top, yeah, well, the top seven now, uh, because uh, Juan Di Felipe has improved. All except Patrick Pile are faster than last year's pole position and track record. Yeah, stand by for an improvement, I think, from Richard Westbrook in the, 50, in the 67 car as he goes through past us now. No. Yeah, it's not going to be close to Garcia no. there. Messed up the middle sector. Got to be under 18 seconds in that middle sector, haven't you now? Yeah, there's we have, I think, three guys on under 18 seconds. The quickest of all is uh, Tommy Lima, the 17.9 in that middle sector. Quicker than Garcia, 17.958. At IMSA Radio, keep the comments coming in. There's a few of you who are gasping at the times here. I'm not surprised. We are too. We're seeing it happening in front of us. And if you're here at Lime Rock Park today, you're seeing history being made, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you on the green hillsides who have come to support the Northeast Grand Prix, right out of it, the 24 car keeping out of the way. John Edwards. Dirtied up his tyres doing that though. Still got three minutes left. He'll be able to put some energy into them. I think he probably reckons that's about it for the uh, for the BMW. That's the quickest time. Westbrook did improve by the way last time around 50.1, but doesn't improve his fifth position. The best for the BMWs uh, prior to this qualifying session was a 50.6 by John Edwards. He's just done a 50.2. Uh, Di Filippi in the sister car a 50.3. So those are you know significantly their fastest laps of the weekend so far. Be reasonably pleased with that. Not not to be sixth and seventh on the grid, but uh, it's all going to be about consistency this afternoon. I love the fact these guys are staying out there. They think there's more time to be hard. Third position at the moment, Dirk Muller going through the uphill chicane in the Ford. He's starting to hop the curbs a little more as well. He's got the Corvette number three of Tonio Garcia, a provisional pole sitter at the moment, not too far behind. Garcia has dropped off two minutes exactly to go on the clock as the Ford comes down the hill, team in, in the pit lane. Richard Westbrook will be no better than fifth position. Tommy Milner in the pit lane for Corvette, fourth for the number four car. But the top three are still out there, 66, the Ford in the big bend now. 9-1-2, Vantua. oh, and Garcia is pitted. Garcia is pitted for provisional pole. With a minute 33 seconds at the top of the screen there. The bright red number one illuminated on the side of the three Chevy Corvette as it rumbles into its pit box, not too far away from where Shea Adam will be doing the pole position interview in round about three or four minutes time. Will it be Tony Garcia or can Dirk Muller do something? It's not going to be this lap for Muller, but he's got another. Well, he's got this one and one more because he'll cross the line with around about a minute to go. Make that 59, 58 and a half seconds to go. And he'll do this lap in something around 49 to 50 seconds if he's competitive through Big Bend. No, he's off it. He's off it. He knows already that that's not going to improve. So there'll be no improvement from the 66. No better than third. Through goes Vanto. Down the final corner. Is he coming into the pits? No, he stays out. Oh, he's been off. Vanto's been off. He's got grass in the front of that car. Crosses the line with 24 seconds to go. Vanto with a 53-1, no, he's out of it as well. Yeah. The unmistakable flat six sound off the cam there. So it is with 13 seconds on the clock, there's going to be no improvements, Pele nowhere. Whatever they that's, did, they've gone the, the wrong way. That's, that's the shocker. I mean, that's, that's uh, really a surprise. I mean, he's been blindingly fast all weekend and uh, hasn't been able to put it together when it mattered most as a check of flag is out in this session. That's the first pole position for Antonio Garcia since Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in 2016, two years. A little ripple of applause there, Shea Adam from Team Corvette Racing. Two years ago at this venue, they took their 100th win as Team Corvette. 
they are on 99 wins in North America as Team Corvette. Can history be about to repeat itself? Will the Lightning, that winning, successful Lightning of Corvette Racing strike twice here at Lime Rock Park? Tonio Garcia just waiting for clearance from his team to get out of the car and speak to Shea Adam. There are some happy, smiling faces down at Team Corvette. Well, they, they certainly are. Dan Banks is down at the pit box. He's been telling his driver for about the last two minutes to come down here, but Antonio, very superstitious, has been waiting to do as told, and uh, the team has given him the clearance, so I see the Corvette headlights firing back up into life, and Antonio being directed again to come down, and now he does just that. You know, lightning's a good color for Corvette racing, because uh, lightning's yellow, isn't it? So uh, kind, of, kind of a little bit poetic there, as he's got a very short drive down to the... Uh, penalty box area a place he will not be looking to visit again over the course of the race weekend or indeed it's it's the third pole for the team since daytona this is antonio's third pole of his career since the merger it's the seventh pole for the number three a very successful car two-time champion in this series is antonio garcia including last year he gets uh, some congratulations from team members. I'll give him a moment to pull his gloves and his helmet off. He's always very calm, is Antonio Garcia. Yeah, Magnussen was tweeting earlier on about uh, Antonio's performance in the morning warm-up and called him the king of Spain, uh, putting in a great performance. Uh, I misread that as the king of Spain and wondered what uh, Phil Tufnell was doing uh, out there. That's a comment for anyone who understands cricket. Antonio Garcia has disrobed, helmet and hands device is off and he's ready with a big smile on his face to talk to Shea Adam. Congratulations Antonio, that was quite the performance, a huge gap over the rest of the field. This Corvette looks pretty good for today's race, how did it feel behind the wheel? I hope so, I mean it felt really good, I mean fast for sure, I mean I don't know if it's the first time GT went underneath 50 here but I mean pretty awesome to be able to run on a low fuel and good tire around here because this afternoon is going to be completely different so yeah we'll see I mean this is the, the fun part of it I mean not taking care of the tires but this afternoon is going to be completely opposite. How important is it here to have that clear track position there's no one ahead of you you don't have to worry about traffic for the first laps. Yeah we're not used to that <laughs> so for the first time we don't have cars ahead of us so yeah it's definitely the best start of the position so now we will see how strategy plays out here because it's very important and then yeah let's see how the Corvette is around here and on a long stint but I think so far we proved that on race pace we are always good so we were always lacking some pace on qualifying so let's let's hope this is a good time well, good luck today in the race Jeremy some final thoughts from you on what we've seen in a record-breaking qualifying session in both GT Daytona and there in GT LM you've been coming here for a lot longer than I have under 50 seconds for a for a GT a GT pool position? Yeah, crazy. Uh, I mean, just seriously impressive. But yeah, the numbers are lining up, aren't they? We, we, we talked about it a few minutes ago. Uh, Corvette had their 100th win as Corvette Racing here a couple of years ago. This is the 50th GTLM race since the formation of the Wales Sports Car Championship. The 50th start for Antonio Garcia. Uh, and uh, what better way would it be for Corvette Racing to get the, the, its 100th win in North America right here this afternoon? Certainly the, the stars appear to be aligning, but that was just a brilliant effort once again for Antonio Garcia, the 38-year-old Spaniard. For me, he's driving uh, as well as he ever, ha ever has done, and he's always been a really talented young man. So very, very impressed. I think he and, Ma he and Jan Magnussen uh, are going to be hard to beat this afternoon because it's never easy to get past a Corvette. That's Jeremy Shaw, Shea Adam was down in the pit lane and the rest of the drivers discussing what they've just seen. The whole race will be live later on on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. But coming next, all of the atmosphere and the countdown to green as we go racing in the Lime Rock 120, live in sound and vision with uh, RS2 staying fired up for you to get all of that atmosphere with Shea and the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge on this busy Saturday race day from Lime Rock Park is live next here on IMSA Radio.